Psalm 121, verses 1 to 8. Shall we all rise up together and read these verses? Now, when the psalmist felt in danger, felt threatened by danger, uh, he looked up, he lifted his eyes to the heavens. Because verses 1 and 2 says, I will lift my eyes to the hills, where does my help come from? And he answers it by saying, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Let me tell you, uh, church, if your prayers are not being answered or, or if you're going through problems, whatever problem it may be, let us not sit, sit back and be upset. Let us face the problem. Let us face it with confidence because God is always on the job. He never sleeps, nor does he get tired. He will definitely help us and he will definitely provide us. Now, when Sam felt threatened by danger, he did not, uh, he did not uh, go to his family for help or friends for help. He looked up to the heavens. He knew that God is there to help him. He had that faith in God. God will help us and take care of us. Just look up to him. He's always there to help us. There's nothing impossible for our God. Our God is a great God. Um, just want to say, um, just want to say that just put your trust in God and He's always there to help us. Shall we bow our head in prayer? Father God, we thank you, Lord, for giving us another day, Lord, to come into your presence, Lord, to worship thee, to praise thee, to adore thee, to glorify the great King, Lord, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Lord. Lord, we worship thee, we praise thee, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving us your word, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for strengthening us, Lord, through your word, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for helping us, Lord, to be with us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you, that, thank, thank you, Lord, for giving us that strength, Lord. And, all, and also, Lord, you are there, Lord, for us, Lord, to help us, Lord. Lord, there is no one, Lord, as, no one else, Lord, to look upon, Lord. You are really our hope. You are really our strength, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for strengthening us, Lord. Lord, I just submit this service, Lord, unto your hands, Lord. Let your mighty hand move in this place, Lord. Lord, I just submit thy servant, Lord, unto your hands, Lord. Fill him, Lord, with your, with your word, Lord. Lord, all glory and honor goes to thee, Lord. I ask all this in your precious name. Amen.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we worship you in this place, Lord God. Lord, we give you all of our worship, Jesus, because you are worthy of our worship, Jesus. Lord, we give ourselves to you in this place, Lord God. We lay down all of our burdens and all of our worries and all of our stress, and we lay it down at your feet, Jesus. God, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord God.
onto the outside and onto the inside.
Thank you for the hard work in this challenging season. Today's passage comes from Exodus chapter 2. Give me an added Bible please. Slow. Exodus chapter 2. A very familiar passage. And I want to talk to mothers today. Fathers, see them listen. Because it is a word of God. Principles applicable to all of us. I'd be addressing the mothers. Now a man of the house of Levi married to a Levite woman. And she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. The whole chapter, the beginning of the passage, you speak about mother of Moses. In this generation, too many women feel like I need to be up, I need to apologize because I am a mother. Because then you use the image dream. To this culture. The background of the passage, uh, most of you might know well, but I just want to bring that uh, bring that to for our understanding. People of Israel, selected by God, separated by God as a nation. Many years later, they lived in Egypt for many years. 430 years exact. That many years that they lived in that land. Then the time of deliverance came. The season is almost similar as our generation now. Science, if you look to the time, it is exactly as this season. That tells us something else coming of the Lord. The time to depart from this world is coming as a church. But that is not my subject today. In this beautiful Mother's Day, I want to bring some three or four things so we can continue or carry on if the Lord come tarries with uh, the ministry God called us in this generation. Probably most unrewarding according to the culture. Probably the toughest in this generation is the job of a mother or assignment of a mother. My mother went to be with the Lord. My mother-in-law I call mother. Is the only one left? I spoke to her this morning, I called her, I don't call her at all. I speak through my wife, she calls every minute, so I hear the news. I called her for reasons and situations. I called her this morning. Mom, I'm going to preach about Mother's Day, so I don't want to stand there as a hypocrite, so I'm calling you. That's not the reason alone. You have a good relationship. My wife's mother. We honor you, mothers. The first thing I wanted to tell you is you are children, which you have in your hand is a gift of God. I want you to understand this. Because it is a gift of God, your assignment is to protect that gift. The king, Pharaoh said, kill the children. 
There are reasons why the king said to kill the children. River Nile is a goddess of Egypt. In River Nile, there are many creatures there. When you throw a child to River Nile, you are sacrificing that child. Crocodiles are there in River Nile. According to the Egyptian mythology or the teaching of the time, their religion, if you throw a child to River Nile and a crocodile ate, eat that child, you are sacrificing that child to the God of River Nile. Now, Pharaoh made a decree. I wanted to do a sacrifice to the God of Nile with the cost of the people of Israel. Two in one. I can destroy them. I can please the gods. And the beloved, we are, I believe in the same the situation in this world. Crocodiles and drugs are, I wanted to swallow my children in this generation. STD, as you all know, there are many out there. One that will swallow your children. The violence in the television, violence in the media, violence in the games. The enemy wanted to swallow with those mothers. They are the gift of God given to you by God. You did not choose your children. Children, you did not choose your mother either. It is God's divine plan from the eternity. <clears throat> Recently, if you look to the situation of this country, is getting worse daily, is going worse to worse if you study. Most of the people are sleeping and they have no idea what is taking place in this country. Some days ago, there was a letter sent to the students of house of a particular district. They wanted to know a four-year-old come to the school or five-year-old or six-year-old. They wanted to know is that a boy or a girl or other. I know you don't want to talk that in the church. But as a responsibility of the proclaim the word of God in this generation, to stand in the pulpit of America, it is time for the people of God, mothers, I want to express that to you have in the day. It is a gift of God given into your life, cherish it, and protect it for the glory of God. Let me go a little farther from that level. The world system telling us to go to the emotion, what your heart says. What they are hearing every single situation in the classrooms from the secular liberal teaching of the teachers is follow your heart. That is not the Bible word. Bible never say follow your heart. Bible says follow the truth. That is the word of God. What is the truth? One incident I am taking, one the latest one, to remind you the seriousness and the importance as a mother in this generation, in this secular society. We are in Egypt. The Pharaoh is commanding us throw your child to the river Nile so I can swallow. Hallelujah. 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 You don't follow your mind. You don't follow your heart. To identify who you are. 
God made you as a male. God made you as a female. If you, God made you as a female, look to the mirror. If God made you as a male, look to the mirror. And he tells you who you are, the identity as a human. The system will tell you, go with your heart or your emotion. But the Bible tells us, no, no, no. We are living in a society. Hallelujah. Everyone follow the heart. Just like the church's time. They pick what they please in their mind. But it is time for the church to, church to come back to the word of God. Eternal, unchanging word of God. Praise the Lord. It is going to get tougher. It is going to get worse. Don't ever think mothering a child is going to get easier. Hallelujah. Protect the gift of God. God give you. It is in your hands. <coughs> Pharaoh said to this mother you know when you study the Bible, before Mary was, before Jesus was born, an angel appeared to Mary. Before Samson came, an angel appeared to Mother. Nothing happened here. No angel came and told this mother, your child is a special child going to deliver. Many times we think, oh, my child is a normal child. Your child is not a normal child. This mother looked to the child and said, you know what? 430 years we are in this world in Egypt. It is a time of deliverance. God did need a deliverer. Every male child is going into River Nile. My neighbor's daughter, I mean, my neighbor's son is thrown into River Nile. My sister's son is thrown into River Nile. My uncle's son is thrown into River Nile. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean I need to throw my child to the River Nile. Hallelujah. Your uncle's child went to this way. Does it mean you need to follow the same way? Devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, look to your child and say, I don't hear any, any whisper from here, from heaven. I did not see any angel, but I know he, he, this time is a gift of God. Give it to my hand for the glory of God. This child will become a great person for the glory of God. Hallelujah. You don't need to have a visitation from angels to tell you your child is precious. Hallelujah. Moses was never being told he is a deliverer. Mother had no clue what the decision for the mother made everything. Hallelujah. Praise God. Number one, protect your child. Number two, when I say to second point, I am not contradicting to what I said on the first point. But I want you to understand the word of God. Release your children. Daughter is a son, a 
Now, Sammy is ready to go to college. Preparation was done. She wrote her letter to the president of the university. Dear sir, my son has been accepted for admission to your college and soon he will be leaving me. I am writing to ask you that you give your personal attention to the selection of his roommate. I want to make sure that his roommate is not a kind of person who uses foreign language or telling of color jokes, smokes, drinks, or takes after girls. I hope you will understand why I am writing and appealing this to you directly. You see, he never left anywhere from my home first time he is leaving me. Do you think president of a university has time to worry about your moment? This mother never believes that child before in life. All of protection, all of protective parents. I told you first, protect your child. Now, do not look to your mother, look to me. All of protective mother. That mother will try to solve all your children's problems. That mother will helicopter the parent, helicopter, and store you the uses helicopter parents. If something happens, the dean or the teacher will get a call from the mother. That mother. All the protective mother will guarantee her daughter or her mother, her son, will always succeed. <clears throat> All protective mother talk always about the children. Our protective mother will always get involved even in personal things of the child, not even allowing that child has feelings and age growth and uh, many other troubles in life. Our protective child mother will never let a child to do anything at home. Always, not mother. Don't look at your pet's parents. Look at me. All the protective mother will always tell the child, I will take care of it. I will take care of it. I will take care of it. All the protective child mother discourage kids doing anything risky. All the protective mother never teach the real world to their children. What is the problem with it? The problem will be over dependency. A child will grow without to make any decisions in life. I have counseled many young couples in this country. 33 year old husband and wife, not from this church, husband and wife. Problem of husband is this girl 
call mother for every single thing, even simple how to make a sandwich. Because she been dependent on mother for 33 years, never learned to do anything in life. They can't stop it. When she entered to a marriage life, she cannot do anything there. All the protective mother will make or create a poor self-esteem child. They never will have that self-esteem high. Result of our protection again, these people's generation will never take their risky things in life. They will be always scary cat to do anything. Our protective children will always have a problem in relationships. They are afraid to go to a relationship with the opposite sex. They will have uh, 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 afraid to make a relationship in any kind of family relationship. They will have a problem to have any relation. They are afraid because they were being exposed in their age. As your pastor, let me remind you, because I've been counseling many young couples with the problems in this country. They don't want to get married because they were being exposed to a death. They don't know what to do in life. <coughs> and you know, look at this child and look at this mother. This mother had no choice. She cannot hold this son anymore in her. With her. Like a decree from the government says, release the child. Mothers, we need to learn to release them. We have no other choice. You will release them later. Release them early so they will. Again, do not forget what I said. You need must to protect them from every evil. That doesn't mean you will pamper them the rest of the life. Remind them who you are. Look at this mother. Three months old, the child was released to the water of uh, River Nile. She had no idea what's going to happen, but God protected him. And the result is, this mother got her him back. And she was able to remind to Moses who he was. How did Moses know he was uh, the child of a Jew? How did Moses know she was a, he was a deliverer? How did Moses know the word of God? How did Moses know? The very few years this mother was, this child of Moses was with the mother nursing him. While she was uh, nursing this child, uh, remind him, Moses, you are living in the palace of Pharaoh. That doesn't mean you are an Egyptian. You are a child of God. Hallelujah. While she was nursing the child, uh, she told uh, Moses, Moses, I will have a very few years uh, with me. I will only get a few years with me. I want you to know, Moses, you are not an Egyptian. We have a purpose in this land. There is a day coming. God will take us from this land to the promised land. This earth, hallelujah, Egypt is not our home. Hallelujah. My dear mothers, your God gave you the gift in your hand. Release them because we have no other choice. But there are some few years you will get them. Don't inject them, become a doctor. Don't inject them, become a great person. I have nothing wrong with it. Send them and give them the best education. But remind them they are a child of God, redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. They are purpose and their destiny is to stand for Jesus Christ. My son, my daughter, I will have few years. You will leave one day. 
You will become an adult one day. I have no other choice. You will go to college. You will find your own things. But I want you to know the reasons in my life, the things I have, what I cherish in my life is the word of God. Jesus died for me. He is my Savior. I love him. I worship him. I want you to know this. There is a day coming, child of God. You might need faith. By faith, when you are a child, I release you to live a life in a small bucket, a small basket. But I want you to know there is a day coming. You might need faith in your life. Don't be afraid to trust the living God. The same Moses, years later, about 40 years, 80 years later, he was standing even in front of the Red Sea. Hallelujah. My mother, my mother taught me, Hallelujah, this river cannot overflow me. Hallelujah, the very same God delivered me free from the river Nile will be able to, Hallelujah, make a way in this my life. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be a positive influence in your children's life. Let me repeat that again. Be a positive influence in your children's life. Are you a positive person? Are you giving anything so they can cherish it? When they remember about you, are they remembering the negatives of life, tragedies, or curses in their life? Or are they carrying on the burden? Or are they able to remember my mother, my father? Hallelujah. Talk about Timothy. Paul is reminding him, Timothy, you remember your mother. You remember your grandmother. They have great faith. I see that in your life. Hallelujah. What are you passing on? Are you passing on positive influence? I am not talking about talking. I'm talking about your life. Hallelujah. I know my father. You know preacher. Hallelujah. You know me standing here as a preacher. My daughter knows me as a preacher. If that and this doesn't match, Hallelujah. Are you me? When I stand here and talk about faith, when I stand here and talk about prayer, when I stand here and talk about holiness, when I stand here and talk about all kinds of things to the word of God, and I come outside, is my daughter see a different person? What are you passing on to our generation? Mother of Moses passed the faith of her into his life, so he was able to use it. Please, God. Pass on. Be a positive influence. Jacobin taught him the faith. Godly principle. Godly character. Trust the Lord for your children. Let me repeat this. Trust the Lord for your children. Let me remind you this. If you serve God faithfully, if you don't bring a curse on yourself, through your act you can bring curse on you. If you live righteously, if you serve God faithfully, your children will never fail. There was a captain made an announcement. The two planes were waiting. The first captain made an announcement. We are going to leave who I would like to get into my 
This time, please welcome. Five hours of this journey will be beautiful. All kind of party and everything will be in the plan. One thing I can promise you, an excellent smooth ride is five hours. But I'm not sure how to land the plane very well. The second cap pilot came and made the announcement. This plane is open. Five hours of journey. I don't know how to fly the plane well so the ride will be bumpy. I cannot promise you a smooth ride for one thing I know. After five hours, I will not have to land. We should fly it. You will fly it. Everybody laughed. And everyone said, I will go to the second one. Yes, I know. But look to this world. Whitney, who spent 48 years old. Prince, 57 years old. I can give you names after names who went out to the things of this world. Whitney, who spent standing in the church, a Baptist church, a worship leader in the choir, Sunday school teacher, 48 years old. Because world is never promised a safe landing. World always promised a joyful ride. And the people want a joyful ride. My dear mothers, I want to remind you, Jesus promised us safe landing. He never promised us smooth ride. Christianity is not a smooth ride business. But one thing is promised, you will have a safe landing. This plane will land safely. You all will come out. One day you will go to the other shore. Just like your Moses mother. I don't know. I did not get time to do too much research on that. I don't know what age she died. I did not look, look into it. I don't know if she was able to see anything happen to Moses later. Anything happened, she had no idea God was using to bring millions of people to the promised land. You don't know what your children God is going to use for. One thing you can do, trust them. Protect them. God is God's gift. Number two, release them so they will grow. Failure is the best example. Let them learn through failure. I am a father. I don't want to do that either. My heart and my mind says no. But the only way you learn is by failure. After 12th, 10th grade, as a shall say, 10th grade, you took a basket of box and I have a such heel box and you took a coaching express or Kerala express and you went three days journey. My older sister is sitting somewhere up here. I think she just finished the temple and I was not even born at that time. I think. No, I was there. When she finished the tenth grade, she left her home. Father took her to the railway station in India. Bye bye, daughter. Did anything happen? And the father did not stop there. The mother did not stop there. Went to the prayer room. Knelt down in the presence of God. In the seat for God, you must be protected. Bible says Moses' mother took the son and released and put the sister there to watch it. What did happen? And she, was, she went to the room, the prayer chamber, and knelt down. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, you brought us to this land in Egypt. There is a reason. I know the time of the coming of the deliverance of my people. Use my child. I don't know who can protect him in this season, but I know you are able to do. My 
be a father. This morning I want to tell you, release the child and be a positive influence. They know you well more than they know you know you. Because they see you all the time. Be a positive influence. And let them know and let them see you trust the Lord. Could you stand with me in this mother's day? Father, I thank you and we praise you for the precious time and the beautiful moment you have given to our life to come and seek your face at God. We are walking to the same sanctuary this morning because of your grace. In this beautiful Sunday, we ask again, Lord Almighty, you give us your grace so we will be able to continue our journey in this world. You saved us, you sanctified us, you delivered from the power of the sin and you set us free because you died on the cross. Thank you, God, for the victory in daily walk in our life, oh God. God, help us to trust you. Help us to trust you in this generation. In this nation, and then you tell your God, we, we want we would like to see, and we know we are able to see. Our generation will stand for you because we stand for you, oh God. We love you, God. And I bless you, people. Thank you for your life. Thank you for the blessings in our life. We love you. We give you glory and honor and worship to you, Master. In Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you. May the Lord give you favor so you will be able to walk in victory until you come back again and give glory and honor and worship to the Lord Almighty who gave us a victory this morning. Put your hand together and give a glory to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is victorious and he is worthy for the praises. God bless you all. Thank you for coming and see you next time.